Douglas X3 Stiletto was supposed to be a needle-nosed champion of the jet age, piercing the sound barrier with ease. Instead, it became a cautionary tale of lofty ambitions and harsh realities. Designed in the early 1950s, the X3 aimed for the stars. It dreamt of roaring off the runway under its own power, climbing to unimaginable heights and cruising comfortably at twice the speed of sound. It also hoped to test out some radical new design ideas, wings unlike anything seen before, and extensive use of titanium. But from the get-go, the X3 was plagued by engine woes. The mighty engines it craved never materialized, replaced by less powerful alternatives. This put a damper on its supersonic dreams right from the start. The first official flight in 1952 was a mere 20 minutes, a far cry from the high-altitude marathons envisioned. These showed that the X-3 was severely underpowered and difficult to control. Its takeoff speed was an astonishing 260 knots. They, more seriously, the X-3 did not approach its planned performance. Its first supersonic flight required that the airplane make a 15-degree dive to reach Mach 1-1. The X-3's fastest flight, made on July 28, 1953, reached Mach 1.208 in a 30-degree dive. The poor performance of the X-3 meant only an abbreviated program would be made to gain experience with low aspect ratio wings. We have a call Frank Everest and Major Chuck Yeager each made three flights. Although flown by Air Force pilots, these were counted as NACA flight. With the last flight by Yeager in July of 1954, the Anaki made plans for a limited series of research flights with the X-3. The initial flights looked at longitudinal stability and control, wing and tail loads, and pressure distribution. Then are then conducting eight research flights in September and October. By late October, the research program was expanded to include lateral and directional stability tests. In these tests, the X-3 was, X was abruptly rolled at transonic and supersonic speeds, with the rudder kept centered. Despite its shortcomings, the X-3 was ideal for these tests. The mass of its engines, fuel, and structure was concentrated in its long, narrow fuselage, while its wings were short and stubby. As a result, the X-3 was loaded along its fuselage rather than its wings. This was typical of the fighter aircraft then, in development or testing. These tests would lead to the most significant flight and the near loss of the aircraft. On October 27, 1954, X-3 made an abrupt left roll at Mach 0.92 at an altitude of 30,000 feet. The X-3 rolled as expected, but also pitched up 20 degrees and yawed 16 degrees. The aircraft gyrated for five seconds before problems. The pilot was able to get it back under control. He then set up for the next test point. The pilot put the X-3 into a dive, accelerating to Mach 1.154 at 32,356 feet where he made an abrupt left roll. The aircraft pitched down and reached a G-loading of minus 6.7, then pitched upward to plus 7 Gs. At the same time, the X-3 side-slipped, resulting in a loading of 2 Gs. Pilot managed to bring the X-3 under control and successfully landed. The Air Force took a brief look at the X-3, but its lackluster performance meant it was more of a test mule than a potential fighter. However, the X-3 wasn't a complete washout. It became an unwilling participant in a high-stakes game of understanding roll coupling, a dangerous phenomenon where a simple maneuver could send the plane into a violent spin. Mm -hmm. The X-3 teeter on the brink of disaster. A planned roll at high speed resulted in a terrifying sequence of pitches, yaws, and g-forces that nearly ripped the plane apart. The pilot, with nerves of steel, managed to regain control, but the incident highlighted the dangers of roll coupling and grounded the X-3 for nearly a year. The X-3 never quite achieved its supersonic glory, but its legacy lives on. The data it gathered on roll coupling proved invaluable in improving future aircraft designs. Its unusual wing design found a home in the F-104 Starfighter, and it was a pioneer in the use of titanium. The X-3 may not have been the supersonic champion it aspired to be, but its bumpy ride through the skies helped pave the way for safer and more capable aircraft.